This is James Aldicher with TheStreet.com TV, and I'm here with Jim Kramer, and we're going to talk about careers in the investment business. Oh, good! So, Jim, let's say let's say there's the the clone Jim Kramer who's just graduating college today, 2007. Mm -hmm. What's what's he going to do? Is it hedge fund, mutual fund, trade on his own, well, bank, okay, dot com I, business? I happen to think that the classic method of training is to go to one of the great investment houses. Mm -hmm where they'll rotate you through all different divisions, um, and then you end up in the analyst division. And in the analyst division, they pay you to learn how to analyze securities. Now, I went into um, sales and trading, but I spent my time, I was part of my group, you know, we had different groups. There was a guy in my group who was, there's three, three people. One guy was the schmoozer, so to speak. He brought in new clients. One guy was the executor, and I was the research guy. So I spent all my time down there and, uh, in research. And what I would tell you is, is that the classic training is what uh, the Steve Cohens of the world with the great hedge funds want. Um, they don't want gut, and they don't want you to say, listen, I've come up with a new way to think. They want to have that background. So that's where I go. Well, let me ask you this, though. Let's say you didn't go to one of the top colleges or you didn't have 1,500 on your SATs. You can't get the job at, at Goldman or Morgan or CSFB. So what do you do? What do well, you do then, then I think you have to go the other route, and you have to go to a hedge fund, and you say, "Okay, look, um, let me get you coffee. Mm. Uh, let me get you on a trading desk." Uh, now, I mean, that route is um, by, uh, and I'm not supposed to talk about it because she hates it, but my wife Karen. Um, and again, I give the caveat that, oh, God, she hates I talk about this. But, you know, she caught along from training just from a clerical position um, because she didn't have that background. It, that's a longer way. It's a hard knocks way. If you have great conviction, it can happen. But you have to go in with the attitude that, look, I am really smart. Um, I am perfectly willing to give you two years of my life in just a low level job to let me at the moment. And this is the example of the guy who's the understudy in Broadway, or equivalent of the guy who's the number three depth chart in football. It's like the first guy gets hurt, the second guy gets hurt, suddenly you're on the desk. More of happenstance than I like. And then one other way is if you go to a college, um, and, and it's a good college, I mean any college, and if you can go go to the alumni network of you know maybe mm -hmm. someone, like one of the things that I, uh, I you know, there was a, a school that I've recruited out of uh, many times, which is Monmouth. Mm -hmm. I recruited out of there because the guy who ran the department at Goldman was from Monmouth. And he was great, obviously. I mean, these places, you know, you go to great school. People go to different schools. And um, and you get a, you, you, you go to Monmouth and you go into a, you know, you write the guys who are the powerful alums and they, they'll they give you interviews. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. Obviously, the most direct way is to catch one at one of the big firms. Now, let's say you're at one of these banks and now you don't necessarily want to work at one of the big hedge funds now. Would you start a hedge fund? Would well, you... I was just talking with someone who's in, in an analogous position. He happened to have worked as a research analyst for very for the best one of the best hedge funds, and he's now decided he wants to go out on his own. Um, I started with um, I had two hundred thousand dollars in the bank, and I didn't get paid my first year, so I ended up having with a hundred thousand dollars. I had to borrow ten thousand dollars from my dad just to make my ends meet. Um, but you know what? I had five million under management, and then I turned that into ten, and then I turned that into fifty, and then a hundred and two years, two years. And I would emphasize that if you have uh, any money in the bank, go do it yourself, um, and go build that record. And if you do it, uh, and, and you're uh, confident, you will get money. Well, let, let's think about that for a second. Let's say you're going from five to ten to fifty to a hundred, and there's a lot of other guys. There's nine thousand hedge right. funds out there right now. What percentage of your time do you think you're going to spend marketing as opposed to research and trading? Well, I think that the answer is 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you're not a marketer, one of the th reasons that I liked the classic training I had at Goldman was also sales training. So I was able to recognize sales training is really a matter of not getting down at your, on yourself when you don't get the money. Um, but I, I would tell you that uh, that if you go in with the approach that it's 50-50 and you're able to spend more time doing stocks, that's great. Uh, but, uh, James, let's back up for a second. It's really, you know, everybody thinks it's for everybody, and they see the money being made, and it's really sensational. I mean, I could go back to it, and I could make a lot of money. Um, but I had unique skill set in that I didn't sleep a lot, and I really was curious about the market, and I had really good discipline and good training. Um, you know, most people, it's not right for them. Now, there's also a, a whole cohort of people who basically are faking it. 
um, they're going and raising money and they're saying, listen, I can generate a, 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 a little above average return. I mean, you go into hedge fund and make it rich. And a lot of people are going to get blown out. I left Goldman at the same time as four other guys, okay? And three of them were back at Goldman within the next year. And I was out there on my own. But I was out there on my own because I didn't want to work for anybody and because I had unique stock picking talents. Now, it's very interesting, by the way. I get a lot of criticism in email and stuff from people saying, you don't know what you're talking about, you know what you're talking about. And sometimes, I, and I usually just say thank you. But there was another period where I picked where I would pick fights and I would say, listen, you have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, on 80, 1987, I was in cash for the crowd, really good. I, no, I mean, you're either good or not is what I'm saying. And, you know, that's okay. Um, the hedge fund world is the NBA. And there's a lot of people who want to be in the NBA and not everybody gets in the NBA, it, Major League Baseball. And that's okay. But you certainly want to take a, take a run at it. Mm. You certainly want to try to be in the NBA. Well, what's interesting also, I think it's not just stock picking, but also how do you deal with that stress of first losing somebody else's right. money? I was and down 9.9% after the first month. I had a 10% uh, provision, which is I had to give you the money back down 10. I'm down 9.9. .9. I go into, wait, excuse, I was down nine and it took me uh, uh, nine, nine tenths to liquidate. And I just sat there and I said, okay, now I got to wait for my pitch. Because, you know, I'm at the, te I'm teetering. I waited and waited and waited. Finally, I got the call that uh, Data Gem was doing better than expected. And I got it in, I got in at 20 and went to 23. And then, you know, you know then the next thing I know, I bought uh, Acme. Um, and, and, and that uh, was rumored to get a takeover bid. So I blew that out. And then I, you know, I mean, and then I had the Phelps Dodge and Georgia Pacific. And, and what, I, what I did was recover. But most people can't. And uh, what people don't understand uh, that... It's a very solo business. Uh, again, I keep coming back to that it's not for everybody, but you mm -hmm. want to give it a try and see whether you have the right temperament. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. And uh, I, I also want to add, actually, uh, if you want to read more about Jim's startup, uh, I think in the book Confessions of a Street yeah. Addict, there's three great chapters. There's uh, the three okay. best chapters, really, in the, almost all these investment books. There's your startup chapter. There's the chapter about, I guess, October 1998. Right, when I blew it. And then there's the chapter about the street.com, which is very interesting right, right. startup well, of thank a, you, an James. entrepreneurial I mean, phase. I mean, you know, one of the things that I have been, um, that I pride myself in is really revealing everything I did wrong. And the book is replete with probably like 100 things I did wrong. <laughs> well, it was, it was fascinating stuff. Well, thanks thank again. You. And thank thanks. You. This is the James Aldrich at the street.com TV.